It feels like home, home, home. It feels like home, home, home. It feels like home. Hey there, friends. Welcome to Weldon Home. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I make a wonderful rendition of something a dear friend brought to us years ago. It has become one of our family favorites. It is a poppy seed bread with a crunchy, buttery orange glaze. And I think you're absolutely going to flip for it. It's so good. So the first thing you're gonna need is 360 grams of flour. So this is um, freshly ground white wheat flour. And I am trying to substitute out a lot of our white flour for the freshly ground soft white wheat. And so far, everything that I've made with it has come out really, really good. I just did a coffee cake with it and it was wonderful. It just adds a little bit of extra chew to it. I don't know how to describe it. It's just a little, it just tastes a little more wholesome. But anyway, we're gonna try it on this as well. Um, but either way, 360 grams of flour, you can either use freshly ground or you can just use all purpose flour. And then two and a half cups of sugar, which is 500 grams. And again, I do like to use um, the scale for the dry ingredients. It's just easier, but this is, it's nice to kind of have a guesstimate of what it's gonna be, like in cups. And this is just such a fresh, mouth-watering recipe. I can't even tell you, it's not like any of the, it's not like a lemon poppy seed, something that you get from the store that tastes all preservative -y and gross. It's actually just really fresh and delicious. So I hope that you will try it with fresh squeezed orange juice, but if you don't have fresh squeezed, you can always use some of the, um, like not from concentrate stuff that you can get at the store, which is also good. So I need one and a half teaspoons of salt. Here's one, and then we'll just do about a half of that and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Gives it a nice lift. And when I do baking powder, I just like to put it in my hand and scrunch it up so that it doesn't have any big lumps in it. And then a half. And then I need one and a half tablespoons of poppy seeds. And that always makes me think of The Wizard of Oz, the scene, oh, poppies. She gets everybody to go to sleep. I think that's tempting in this time that we're living in to just kind of close your eyes and go, go blindly forward. But I know that we have been called to stay awake and fight the good fight. So that's, that's my plan. And I hope it's yours too, because we need everybody. So two and a half tablespoons of poppy seeds. This is not wanting to be generous at all with coming out of here. That's ridiculous. I got these poppy seeds from a discount grocery store and now I can see why. No, I'm sure they're gonna be fine. It makes me wanna take this whole top off. So spring has definitely sprung around here. We're getting lots of new blooms and lots of things going. Uh, some things that are out front, I don't even know what they're called, but the lady who lived here before us planted them and they're beautiful yellow blossoms all over these bushes uh, that are in our front yard. And I just love that's the first thing to come to bloom in the spring. That and we have some, um, some pear trees that are like just ornamental, but they have the showiest blooms too. So I'll see if I can talk Paul into going to get some b-roll so you guys can see what it looks like it is really really getting pretty around here and it's just going to get prettier and more colorful but the beginning has begun here we are in march already hard to believe so i'm just getting these things to come into a mixture again whenever you're making any kind of cake or a quick bread like this you really want it to look a lot like a store-bought cake mix that's what it should look like in your bowl all completely free of lumps and just um a consistent powdery dry heap of ingredients and then we'll start getting our wet ingredients together to add to that but make sure that all of your dry ingredients are really fluffy and nicely put together you can sift them together if you like I tend not to do that but 
I like to sprinkle all of my ingredients with my hands. It gets my hands dirty and I don't mind getting my hands dirty. We just got some new chickens. So exciting. We got some Easter egg or chickens that are gonna have the multicolors of egg, eggs and then also we got um, some really dark brown laying chicken eggs. So we've got lots of white leghorn chickens and chickens. They're Moran chickens and they're mixed with whatever's what what is Penny? Do you know? A Rhode Island red. See? So brilliant. So they're mixed with Rhode Island red so that they're more prolific. I'm really excited to see how they do, but they're just babes right now. So in this cup, I have a cup and a half of room temperature milk. I just popped it into the microwave for a second. And to that, I'm going to add one cup plus two tablespoons. And I don't know if I even have a cup of oil left in there. I don't. I don't. So actually what I'm going to do is use a little bit of butter. Water? Water will not do. So my son tells me that the sunflower oil is not good for us, so I guess I'm not getting that again. But it was <laughs> it was a lot cheaper than the other oil, and I thought I'd give it a shot, but he said all of the pressed seed oils are just not nearly as good for you, so. All right, my 19-year-old son who's doing all kinds of research on what we should be eating. So butter is actually great for you, and I will be using that. It is. Butter is really good. Well, I would rather have my own homemade butter, but since we don't have a dairy cow, I'm, and our, our little goats, we're hoping to um, breed at some point. We need a bigger, we need a goat stanchion. We just, like, they have a little, a little covering, but not a place that, like, they could have babies and I could go milk in there. So we need a little bit bigger goat area. So one cup of oil plus two tablespoons. So this is just the second half. You can use whatever kind of oil you have on hand, but that is going to do us for this recipe. And then I'm gonna actually need to take that out. Well, a little bit of extra oil never hurt. So I'm gonna add three beaten eggs. And these are room temperature farm fresh eggs from our chickens. We haven't had a double yolk for a while. That one maybe, no. Nope, no double yolks. So you're gonna want three lightly beaten eggs to add to that. Just letting that kind of cool. Everything at room temperature is a really good idea. It just emulsifies a whole lot easier if you do that. So, and then we want about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla and about the same of almond. Now, almond is one of those that you really want to be more sparing than generous with because if you if you get too much almond, it really overpowers everything, but just the right amount, one and a half teaspoons. Oh, it smells so good. I love the smell of almond extract. All right, so then we're gonna combine our wet ingredients all together. And I'm just gonna use the mixer, but you know me, I might just use the fork. <laughs> A dear friend of mine wrote me a, a text and said she loved my um, quote that a fork is an irreplaceable implement in the kitchen and my favorite one, something like that. Um, but yes, I'm gonna just use the fork. So I make a well in the center and just pour in those wet ingredients. I'm just trying to get my fork to go all the way down to the bottom of the dry ingredients so we don't have any dry ingredients that aren't touching the wet ingredients. And if you use measuring cups as your mixing bowls, that is the way to go in my opinion. That way you can just only dirty one thing. This is gonna make two 
amazingly delicious loaves. And I can tell you the smell even just right now is like, ooh, it is so, so good. My dear friend in California used to bring us these loaves and uh, it was like a family secret recipe. And so ever since then, I've been really trying to come up with my own. And over the years, I have developed what I think is um, very comparable. Hers, I think, was with lemon, but I really like it with the orange. And we're from a place in California called Redlands that used to be world famous for oranges. And so we actually lived in a little orange grove and I could go out and pick the oranges every day and it would make everything just taste so fresh and delicious. I kind of took it for granted. And now that we live in North Carolina, we can't have citrus. And I had my husband buy me some little Meyer lemon trees and I have kept them alive all year long. I've been bringing them outside and inside and trying to get them enough sunshine and enough water and enough warmth of the house. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Well, a couple of weeks ago, maybe just a week ago, it said it was gonna be 25 for the low. So I was like, oh, I gotta bring them in. For some reason it said 25 for the low on Sunday. So I went to bring them in on Sunday. Well, it was Saturday night that it had been 25 degrees. It was like that very morning and it had been 25 degrees and I think they died. So I'm so sad. The, the taste of fresh citrus is just something irreplaceable and I'm so sad to miss out on it. Hopefully they'll come back. We'll have to see. But at the moment, it's not looking very promising. So this is gonna make, like I said, two loaves. Isn't that beautiful? I love the look of the poppy seeds. And you want them just to be even. And they're gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about an hour and five minutes. So 65 minutes in a 350 degree oven. Oh. 